Hello my loves, it's my birthday. So today I've done my birthday nails, finally. Okay, that's the first hand. I'm on to the second hand. I'm using the easy tips, the stiletto ones from Glitter Planet. Shebang, they are so easy. Oh my God. I swear I'm never sculpting again in my life. I just don't care. These were so easy to do my own nails, like one hand in an hour and a half with filming. Yes, please. Um, including like prep everything and getting all the shots for filming and the photos at the end and you know so I'm just showing you how easy these are to apply size it up stick it on there you go the pinch stilettos I love but the problem is if you've got somebody with a flat nail bed they won't stick whereas these are super super thin and bendy and they stick like easy just size them up and stick them on I always buff the uh, contact area on the outside like to thin it down a little bit. That's just me because I am slightly obsessed with making sure there's no like lumps. But just they easy. Honestly, they are easy. And they're so long, which is great. Although my plan was to have the full length stilettos. However... I remembered when I had a meeting at the school that as of Monday, I'm helping with the children at the forest school, which is like making dens and bonfires and looking for animals and bushcraft and stuff. So I really can't have long stiletto nails. It's not a proud pread, honey. So I'm going to have these instead and wear really big gloves. But yeah, just look, they just they go on so easy because they're so thin. They're very malleable. Is that the right word? like bendable do you know what I mean so they attach really 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 easily and they're just beautiful so I'm gonna cut them down anyway with my tip cutters these tip cutters are six years old yep they're from Nao Nails six years ago <laughs> still going strong could do with a new pair but you know who cares anyway I'm just sizing them up and trimming them down now when you size up against the hand you've already done leave a little bit extra on these ones babes because you're going to be filing and if you try and match them now what will happen is when you file later in your shaping you'll actually take a bit of length off and they'll end up shorter so just give it a tiny hair more just a tiny tiny bit for you to play around with when you're shaping your nails later otherwise yeah they won't be even at the end so yeah there we go that's that done and i'll just show you quickly i do just buff the contact area I don't really know if it's necessary with these tips, but it's a habit and old habits do die hard. So I just buff over it with an 180 grit. I've done all my cuticle prep and everything already. And then once I've done this step, I quickly just wipe it with a tad of acetone to blend that tip area in. The thing is, if you have a raised area where the tip contacts the nail plate, then as you apply product, you're going to create a step. And the more layers you put on, the bigger that step will be. And the more of a pain in the backside it will be to rectify it later on. So even if it's a wellless tip and you feel that, you know, it says you don't need to blend. If you see a little step, just give it a little buff. You'll thank me for it, I promise. Don't press hard and break the tip off or whatever. Just, just give it a little buff. It's like doing a little tap, tappy, tap, tap, except we're buffy buff buffing. And then get rid of all the dust, every single little piece, because you don't want that in your life. And then wipe over it with a little bit of acetone and you'll be good to go. Okay, then we're gonna dehydrate and prime. Can you hear my cat snoring? He's making the cutest little noises. <laughs> I wish I could let you hear him, but I don't think it's loud enough. Hokey dokey. So now I'm going to put my clear base down and I want you to spot the obvious mistake that I made because on a couple of these nails I was picking up quite dry beads and I picked up like a bit of powder on my brush and the powder then sort of drizzled onto the nail and caused frosting because it wasn't properly um, 
polymerized. So that is a very clear error from myself and I am putting out a public service announcement to be aware of it. Oh, I'm using my size 12 bestie brush as well. Um, I'm using Nail Make Crystal Clear. So yes, you will see that I get a little bit of frosting on a couple of these nails and that is my fault for basically picking up a super dry bead and then there was some powder left on my brush and it kind of scattered onto a couple of the nails. And I thought, that's okay, I'm going to brush over it. But no, it wasn't okay and it didn't react properly. So yes, that's something. It's very, as any of you other YouTubers will know, filming your own nails is really hard because I don't have a monitor to look at. So I can't see on the monitor. There you go. That's that's right there. Okay. That is it. Um, I can't see what is being filmed because my camera is opposite me facing downwards and I, it's my phone. It's not like a camera with a flip out screen or anything. So I can't see what I'm filming and I'm in a really awkward position for me to see what I'm doing. So it's a bit cat handed as we would say in the UK. Um, but yes, I'm laying my clear base down to protect my natural nail from staining and also as a strength because I'm going to be doing a lot of design work. There we go again. Um, and I need that strength. Although after seeing what I did here, I'm not sure how strong it will be. It'll be interesting to find out. then so once this is done i'm going to be showing you what i'm using from nail visions up in smoke unicorn's horn beautiful colors and lilac pastel these are available on her facebook page also i'm using nail mates toasted rose i'm just going to shape these tips just quickly i literally just gave them a whiz over with my steel file. Um, yeah, Nail Vision powders are available on her website. She sent me loads to try um, a few months back and I'm still kind of going through them when I do designs and, and these colors just fitted in perfectly with the crystals I wanted to showcase in today's design because these were inspired by the newly released color shifting Swarovski crystals that are unique to Angel Crystals only. Okay, they're amazing. You'll see them at the end, but they are unique to Angel Crystals only. And I've got some. <laughs> right, I'm putting Unicorn Horn down first. It's a beautiful marshmallow pink coloured acrylic with iridescent and matte little glitter dots in it. It's so freaking cute. Like, so cute. These are design powders because they're highly, highly pigmented. So if a powder is highly pigmented, nine times out of 10, it's design only, because there's not enough acrylic in the mix to give you that strength that you need. Now I'm just gonna do a swoosh. I'm not color blocking with it, but I am doing like a negative space at the tip, but it's not like a rock hard color block. It's more like a swirl. This is like a pinky, lilac-y, wintry set. It's just gorgeous. I haven't had a set of nails either. I haven't had a set of nails since September that match since the first week of September. So praise the Lord, I have some now. Okay, so I'm just building up the opacity. It doesn't take a lot really, just a little bit. Just like, yeah, popping it here and there. And then just using my brush to shape it really. I don't, again, I'm not making a hard line with it because I'm gonna be doing freehand over the top. On to the next nail, and this is, what did I say it was? Up in Smoke or something like, I'll put the names in the description box. This is the darkest of the three. It's like a smoky mauvey gray, it's beautiful. Highly, highly pigmented. There's a lot of pigment in this. So again, it's not really suitable as a strength powder, but it's, beautiful as a design powder and you can work very thin
So I'm literally just feathering that down to the tip, making sure I've got a nice even coverage, making sure it's not thick or bulky. But we're gonna do an ombre on this nail, so I'll let it set once, I've, once I'm happy with the coverage on this particular color. Placing a tiny bit extra at the tip there, just to make sure I've got a bit more opacity. And then I'll turn my brush around and blend it back with kind of like the underneath tip of the brush, not with the tip. If you blend you, with your brush tilted too far upwards or pointing down towards the nail, you will just scoop really common thing I see with my students and if you guys are watching you know exactly what I mean don't you you know what I mean it's the brush angle it's all in the brush angle and the file angle so I'm just going to do a marble on this now so I've literally just I'm using Valentino soft touch and up in smoke from nail visions and I'm just creating a little swoosh at the cuticle there to make it neat and then I'm going to do Valentino soft touch Nail Vision Up in Smoke, then Valentino Soft Touch again, and then Lilac Pastel, or Pastel Lilac from Nail Vision. So four beads, and you don't place them on top of each other, you place them just down below, like in front of, so they're going, do you see what I mean? It's hard to explain, it's easier to show people when they come and sort of undo their training. One of the one things people want to do is marble. I tried to show people the swooshy marble instead because it is easier, but if you want to do a marble like this, it's just to do your bead placement, really. I would say if you're just starting out with marble, probably a swooshy is the easiest, and then this marble is like next on your list. So as that polymerizes and starts to set up a little bit, it's a lot easier to move it into place without ruining your blend and your marble. If you do it too soon, or if your brush is too wet, then you will literally just create a brown color, more than likely. So yeah, be aware that you don't want to move it too much yet. And then I'm just going in with a little bit of unicorn's horn to include it within the design a little bit more. And then a little bit of up in smoke. And a bit more soft touch. Give them a little swoosh. And just cover any little patches that haven't been covered enough. And then I'm gonna get a little bit more unicorn's horn and I'm just gonna play around with it until I'm happy. It's really like up to me when I decide to stop, I guess. The other nail had a really cool marble come out on it that I did with my left hand. But it's, so, it's, it's so hard to replicate, isn't it? So I'm just putting a tiny bit of up in smoke here to break up that lighter area with the lilac. Just to break it up a little bit. There we are. And then I'm gonna pop a little bit of unicorn's horn just in the side at the cuticle. Just again, to break it up, if you see an area that's too blocky, you just paint a little bit on, use the very tip of your brush, light movement, get it in there. Beautiful beds. It's freaking stunning. I love it. On to the index finger, and that is going to be the same as the pinky. Unicorn's horn, swooshed, but opposite side. So I'll leave you to watch this one.
Hokey schmokey dokey. I'm just finishing that off. As you do. I had to make sure it had plenty of sparkle in it. And then we shall get on with the thumb, and that's going to be lilac pastel. And we're going to do an ombre. Now, lilac pastel, it's not... Uh, I don't... I don't hate it, but it's very patchy and marbled. And I think this one has actually been discontinued. But it was sent to me, you know, as like, hey, have a play, see what you think. And she was completely open to suggestions and stuff. So it was kind of in my um, have a play pile, not like here's a perfect acrylic for you to work with pile. She gave it to me as have a play pile, feedback to me, tell me what you think. But the colour itself is just perfect for what I wanted. It's just like she's tweaked a lot of the powders since then and worked with the manufacturers and tweaked things. So um, she sent me these out like, like earlier on in the year, way earlier on in the year. So it's just a, a really nice shade, but I know pastels are notoriously difficult. So I ain't complaining, honey, cause it's really pretty. Okay, toasted rose from Nail Mate going on. Um, I'm pretty hooked on this. This one and, and my Valentino covers, they seem to come out more than anything. I've still got my Glitter Bell covers, but I find like I am drawn to these. I go through phases. I think that's what it is with me. I go through little phases. You know, like when you have your favorite lippy and you'll only wear that color. And then all of a sudden you're like, no, no, I'm only wearing this color now. I go a bit like that. So as you can see, this blends really easily. Like really easily second bead going on place the bead on tuck it in with the tip of your brush feather it down tuck it in and when you're feathering it down you're not scooping it down the nail so you're not removing that apex you're feathering the top of the bead and blending it into the previous bead okay otherwise what you'll end up with is you'll lay your cuticle bead down and then you'll swipe all the product off and go oh where's all that gone then i got to start again wasting product so be very gentle with your brush movements. I bleed the back of this bead so that I have a bit more opacity here. Tuck the top in. Now my brush was too wet. You see what happened? I cleaned off my brush, I left it too wet and it instantly injected that powder with monomer and it just went Bleh. That's my error. Please don't do what I did because it will make your bead go squishy and then you lose the opacity and it kind of ruins your ombre, so yeah. Just, you know, don't do what I did. Anyway, second bead. I have not bled the back of this one. I'm placing it on. I'm tucking it in with the tip of my brush, very gently, and then feathering the top of that bead. See, I'm not taking that whole bulk of bead, I'm just feathering the top of the bead into the previous bead. So I'm leaving the bulk of the product at the apex, leaving that structure there and just blending it into the previous bead. It's really important because I see a lot of people scooping, shoving their acrylic, moving the whole lot of acrylic down the nail and you need it at the top. So yeah, just it's brush angle and it's how you go about it. Like you need to be gentle with your brush. You need to be delicate with your brush. That if you're rough with your brush, you're literally just gonna splodge your product from one side to the other and just cause so much more work for yourself. If you're nice and gentle and you get used to your ratios and don't make stupid mistakes like I just did there a minute ago, it'll be a lot easier for you. <laughs> right, onto capping. Whoa, I picked up a mahoosive bead and I was like, holy shit balls when I put that down on the nail. What's going on here, honey? That bead was way too big. Um, <laughs> but hey-ho, it was really hard because I couldn't see properly what I was doing because beh I'm behind my hand trying to look over. When students say to me, God, it's really hard doing it on my own nails. I totally feel you. I know what you're saying. Especially trying to film it. It's a nightmare. But anyway, thank goodness this system stays put because it was a lot easier to work with. And now as it polymerizes and it becomes easier and easier to work with, I'm just gonna walk the bead down the nail. Just tuck it in and walk it down the nail. And I never, 
ever have problems with air bubbles anymore. I'm so happy. When I want clear acrylic, I get clear acrylic, not bubbly. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's, it's just nice because I was stressing for a bit there about what am I doing wrong? And then I just switched up my clear acrylic. Boom. Problem solved. Placing that bead on, it stays put. I'm going to feather that back into the first bead. That's the first thing I will do because I do not want a step. And then I'm just going to create my structure. I'm going to constantly change the angle I'm looking at on the nail as well. Constantly changing where I'm looking to try and balance that nail out. It's really hard doing it on yourself, but just give yourself time. If you're working with a system that gives you time, it's a luxury, I know, but it, it, it really does help. So they're all capped and filed. Right, I've skipped back because otherwise you'd be here for like six million years. And we got some sparkly shit to get on with. These are the colour shifting Shiroskis. They look clear. Oh no, they don't. They look lilac. Oh no, they look clear. They are amazing. And I'm going to be using these AB raindrops. These are the smaller ones. And these clear navette flatbacks. So these brand new Lilac Luster Colour Shift Shirovskis, like I said, they're unique to Angel Crystals. They are absolutely stunning. I've had these in my drawer waiting to do a release video for you guys. They are released. I have got a discount code. And I believe they've got a Black Friday sale on, but I don't know when it finishes. So you might get 15% off if you catch it in time. But I don't know when that finishes. And it's so cool because it looks like you've got different, like normally you might use clear and the lilac to create a little design, but these shift on their own. So you don't need to, you just need one type of crystal. Hello. So clever. I keep staring at them. In the mix pack, you get like four or, four or five different sizes. So it's pretty good. Good value for money. Now on this one, we're going to make... <laughs> It's supposed to be a snowflake, people. And then one of my students went, well, she's like a friend now, really. She was like, oh, I love your flower nail. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> it looks like a flower. It's supposed to be a snowflake. <laughs> but it's the closest I could get, okay? So don't diss me. So I've put a big lilac luster crystal in the middle. And then I'm using the AB raindrops. Like so. So top, bottom, side and side. Now, I have really skinny nails. It's about the only part of me that is skinny. Really skinny nails. So when I try and do the crystals at the side, they're actually longer than the space. So I'll show you how to, um, how to get over that because it's, yeah, it's a pain in the ass if you've got skinny nails. I don't know why I couldn't have, I'd rather have fat nails than a skinny waistline. I just tilt my crystals up so they slightly go over that central crystal, can you see? Because there's no way they're gonna fit there otherwise. I hate having skinny nails because I don't have enough real estate to work on, Do you, know, you know, I haven't got enough space. But yes, I anchor them upwards and then later on I fill the gaps with my top coat and give it a really good cure. Then I'm going in with the little clear navette flat backs see I thought they looked like little snow but they do look like flowers though don't they never mind it's the thought that counts I haven't stopped jabbering today it's because I'm all hyped up because it's, it's my bee day and I've had loads and loads of coffee as well I'm absolutely knackered but I'm like like that my brain's going really fast Sorry, I got interrupted by a small person, little Oliver Lee. Right, my snowflower. <laughs> it's pretty, it sparkles like, oh my God, it sparkles so much. I'm in love with these nails. And because of the tips being so strong, I feel like these nails are like probably the skinniest nails I've ever done. Like, they're not bulky at all. They're really nice. Okay, some more of the Lilac Luster color shifting crystals. Listen, 
I'm just in love. Look at it. One minute is clear, next, I, how do they do that? I need to know. It's gonna be like a mystery that will stress me out for the rest of my life. Seriously, how do they, I'm gonna ask. You don't ask, you don't know, do you? So I'm gonna ask how they make them. I know how they make Shrovskis because I went to Shrovsky head, headquarters in London and they taught us all about it. But I want to know how they make these ones. Because these are special. And then on 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 the uh, on 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 the index finger, I'm doing the same as the little finger, just going down in size. That's not the biggest. That's like second from biggest or something. So that's so pretty, pretty, pretty. And then after this, I shall top coat, and then we'll do some freehand because I'm sugaring. And I found it easier to top coat first. So there you go, all sparkly and beautiful. Oh my God. Okay, I'm going in with Nail Mate Super Gloss. And look at that. Bing! And I will do the underneath of this nail as well. Not too much, just a little bit, just to give that clarity. So pretty. And then I'm going to take my detailer brush and tuck it in around those crystals just as an extra security blanket from day to day wear and tear. It works really well alongside the Angel Crystals adhesive. Quick tip, wait for your adhesive to dry fully before applying top coat or it will ruin your top coat. So as you can see, this is quite a complicated one to do. So I'm literally doing a little bit with the brush and then the majority of this nail is filled in using a detailer brush. I've sped it up because it's quite painstaking, but it is necessary. You really need to take your time with this step to ensure, number one, extra adhesion. So that top coat is gonna really help to stick those crystals in on top of the adhesive and stop anything getting underneath them, but also, the reason you've got to be so careful is because if you top coat over the top of the crystals, I've said it a million times, you will lose the facets that cause that beautiful shimmer and shine. They will be gone forever. Don't do it. When I see people like top coat over crystals, I'm like, <coughs> can't, can't, cause can't compute. Why would you do that? So yeah, I'm tucking it in, I'm letting the bead, the drip go in between and then I'm working it around where I need it to go. Letting the drip go in between, working it where I need it to go. It's not like super painstaking, it's just a little bit long-winded, but it's so worth it because they're, they're really protected. I mean, I've been washing up, cooking dinner with no gloves on, I know, yes, well, Oliver nicked my rubber gloves and used them as duck feet, so what could I do? Um... So yeah, they and they've stood the test of time. They're fine. Oh, I love it. I love top coat. Again, same here, tucking it in into those little gaps. My cat's washing himself. I thought there was like a dripping noise. No, it's my cat licking his own bottom. Delightful. And then this beautiful index finger. Very pretty. And my thumb. The thumbs I just left like this because they were pretty simple and I just left them. I thought, yeah, they'll do. Now, after they've been cured for 60 seconds, I'm going to get Madame Glam's Perfect White. It arrived, yes! And Glitter Planet Clear Hollow, and we are gonna do some seasonal sugaring. So I'm using a long brush, and I'm just doing some swirlies, like swooshy lines, just like ice. I'll tell you what inspired this, was the ice on the windscreen the other day. It was in swirls, it was, it was like somebody had gone and done water marble with the ice and it just looked so gorgeous and it was like this sort of shape. So I decided to mimic it with 
um, sugaring. I'll tell you how, I'll let you know how it stands up because I've got like obviously forest school tomorrow and all that sort of stuff with the kids. So it'll either last or it won't. But I sprinkle over the clear hollow, which is perfect for this. And then I'll cure that and I'll cure it for 60 seconds. So I'm going to do the same on the index finger. Just do a swirly whirly woo. Just all like nice and cute. Something a bit different. There we are. Give that a little sugar and stick it in the lamp. And then I will brush off the excess, oil them up, and I'll show you the finished design. I hope you like it. Thank you for watching. Tally bye.